is Black Lives Matter, a universal call for social justice. Um, and it is a great segue. Uh, we will have our panelists discuss intersectionality, the role of solidarity, um, and allies um, in the movement. Um, so the first, I will introduce our, our panelists. We have Relina Joseph, and she is an associate professor in the University of Washington's Department of Communication. She is also the founding director of the UW's new Center for Communication, Difference, and Equity. She works on representations of difference in media, and her areas of expertise are representations of mixed race, African Americans, and women of color. And her presentation is titled, How to Talk About Race and Difference in the 21st Century. So we will start off with Helena. Great, thank you. Thanks, Dia. And so our, our goal, tell me if I'm screaming at you in the back. I want you to be able to hear, but I don't want to be screaming at you. You all right? OK. Um, so our, our talk here is going to be um, uh, hopefully very accessible, engaging. We're going to also try and keep it shorter because we want to give you all the opportunity to speak in this session. And you will also at the end have the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have had of the first set of panelists. And, and those faculty members are still here. So uh, in order to talk, so my, my, my little bit here is talking about difference, talking about race in the 21st century and the particular ways in which we think about doing that. And in order to prime you uh, to have this conversation, uh, I, I asked you all to participate in a little bit of an exercise. So for those of you all who just came now, what everyone who was here before lunch was doing was they had to write down all of the things that they had done from the moment they woke up until the moment they started the exercise at the end of the first panel, and try and inscribe, try and overlay each of those moments with identity, with race, with gender, with sexual orientation, with class, um, perhaps with the intersections of these. And then you all went to your groups and um, unpacked that a little bit and shared with, with um, some new folks, probably a combination of students and faculty and maybe some staff members. And what I wanted to do right now was to hear from a couple of different folks about how that exercise went. I've taught this to lots of different groups of students and people tend to fall into two camps immediately. There are the people for whom this exercise is really easy. It just flows like water. They're just writing and writing and writing. You've got to cut them off at the end. And there are those for whom this exercise is tremendously difficult. And they are struggling all the way through. Hopefully, as you went through and experienced this exercise and then opened yourself up to hearing other people's experiences, what you were able to see um, were the, the both visible and the invisible experience of, experiences of minoritization, of discrimination, and of privilege that we all have. And I like to start this exercise when we begin talking about the difficulties of engaging difference in the 21st century because we do live in a world where it is pervasive for us to say that difference does not matter. We can look around some of our classrooms and see some type of diversity. We can turn on our screens and see some valence of difference. And that is supposed to then, for us, mean that we have somehow achieved this moment of equality. Right? What we're not seeing here in our assumptions of post-raciality or of colorblindness are some of the statistics that we see on the screen here are some of the information um, that the next speaker, that LaShonda, is going to tell, you, tell us a little bit about when we return to our discussion of disparities. So as we move forward, what I'm hoping that you all are going to do is to hold all of the experiences that you heard from that last exercise with you. And to suspend your disbelief when someone talks about these, what might seem to you to be a trivial, um, uh, experience with thinking about their hair and to think about the very real uh, racialized gendered implications of things like your hair or this waking up moment or a bus commute, right? And all of these small micro moments are what for us become and mean race. They mean gender. They mean sexual orientation to us. And so we have to think about the very real embodied experience of difference our own and everyone else's if we're going to try to get to that next step of working against these forces of structural inequality that LaShawn is going to talk to us a little bit about now.